Alex Berenson, one of the most provocative COVID tweeters, Mm -hmm. has been, he was kicked off Twitter permanently. And now he just got back on, and it's actually very interesting. I don't know if you know who this is, but Mm -hmm. um, he's a vaccine skeptic. Um, I mean, he's just been pointing out all along that the vaccines don't seem to do what the you know companies or the government are telling us they do mm-hmm. and um he's had questions uh, certainly about the efficacy of masks and so on so in august of last year we're almost 12 months later now he was permanently suspended by twitter over allegedly violating their quote misinformation policy and this is the final tweet they got him axed it doesn't stop infection or transmission don't think of it as a vaccine think of it at best as a therapeutic with a limited window of efficacy and terrible side effect profile that must be dosed in advance of illness. And we want to mandate it? Insanity. So he filed a lawsuit against them, Greg, and it appears that he has won. He filed it in San Francisco, uh, looks yeah. like federal court where they're based. And um, the statement Berenson released as he's back on Twitter is the parties have come to a mutually acceptable resolution. I have been reinstated. Twitter has acknowledged that my tweets should not have led to my suspension at that time. To recap, last August, Twitter banned me after I got five strikes under its COVID-19 misinformation policy, which meant I had supposedly made claims of fact that were, quote, demonstrably false or misleading and, quote, likely to impact public safety or cause serious harm. Uh, That's the policy, Alex writes. Uh, That's what it takes to get a strike. Look it up. Now we come to find those tweets, quote, should not have led to my suspension and Alex writes, oopsie. And here's the part I want to ask you about. Um, The settlement does not end my investigation into the pressures that the government may have placed on Twitter to suspend my account. I will have more to say on that issue in the near future. And Elon Musk, who, of course, is in the midst of trying to buy Twitter. More on that in a minute. There's an update there. Says tweets at Alex Berenson saying, Can you please say more about this, quote, pressures that the government may have placed on Twitter? Berenson responds, I wish I could, Elon Musk, but the settlement with Twitter prevents me. However, in the near future, I hope and expect to have more to report. Now we're in a very dangerous free speech territory. Twitter Mm -hmm. suppressing Alex is one thing. The the federal government pressuring them to do it is another. Go. Yeah, Yeah, no, this is concerning. The, the, you know, I'm not used to a situation because Twitter is, of course, a private company so that they have have, have, uh, free speech rights and association rights of their own. But there's a line, you know, when the government is actually saying you have to kick these people off, you have to fire that journalist, all that kind of stuff, where it starts actually looking a lot more like state action, which is uh, which is prevented by the First Amendment. And the um, uh, the whole misinformation uh, argument scares me because, you know, free speech is all about the fact that none of us are all knowing, none of us are omniscient, you know, and, and the idea that we uh, can say definitively that any given speaker is absolutely for all times, you know, wrong, uh, or for that matter, isn't contributing something to the argument just by being skeptical, um, is uh, this information opens up like a uh, ability to censor that's a mile wide, and people should be much more uh, critical when it comes up, because it's not that easy to know the truth. And they're not even hiding it. I mean, Glenn Greenwald had a piece last year. It was uh, February, I think, of 2021, calling out House Democrats, saying they've made no secret of their ultimate goal with these hearings that they're holding to exert control over the content on online platforms. They called in the heads of Twitter, Facebook, um, and who was the other one? Oh, Google. Google, those three. They called them in and said um, they, this is a quote from one of the House Democrats, industry self-regulation has failed. And therefore, we must begin the work of changing incentives, driving social media companies to allow and even promote misinformation and disinformation. So this Mm -hmm. is this is them trying to use state power to change what the social media platforms will allow on their sites. This is why uh, Vivek Ramaswamy um, had a piece last year arguing in The Wall Street Journal that we do need to take a hard look at whether when thanks to both the carrot and the stick being used against the social media companies by the government, they've they've transformed into something much closer to a state actor that we could treat them, though private, as more of a public entity for purposes of free speech. What do you think? 
Uh, the, I mean that line exists, and the and the amount of uh, of of um, encouragement, <laughs> of, of coercive uh, action that the government's taking that that's going to be the, the key question. But all, it's already at a stage where it's kind of like, okay, you're really pushing on the social media companies to you know, for example, uh, uh, um, uh, exclude Joe, some of Joe Rogan's episodes, and it's like. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's even even if you don't think you're crossing in the line of an abuse of power, which is which is debatable. You know, one thing that the new fire, uh, the Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression, you know, tries to emphasize are these norms about uh, freedom of speech, about free speech culture. And the idea that kind of like Mm. you, you, you are also knowing that you can decide for people in advance what they are or are not allowed to hear is fundamentally troubling. And it's also incredibly, frankly, arrogant. Yes. Oh, this is, I want to talk about this. I, I also want to, I forgot to mention my friend, my friend, uh, Jed Rubenstein, who was the co-author of that Wall Street Journal piece with Vivek. Well worth everyone's time. Um, humility, free speech and humility go hand in hand. And yep. this is part of earlier this week, we had Noah Rothman, who has a new book out called The New Puritans on how sort of these wokesters who are trying to police everybody's speech are just like the old Puritans. And they, they are totally against fun and they think they know better, and there's a condescension to the way they try to police all of our speech and thoughts and so on. And mm-hmm. it's that's the opposite of humility, which is the willingness to admit you don't know everything, not all of your opinions may be perfectly, quote, right, and that in this country we prize something above being right anyway, which is debate and freedom of expression and the, the, the ability to duke it out. Mm-hmm. Well, this is one of just in the past couple of weeks, um, you know, I've been seeing, you know, mainstream, you know, mainstream media outlets coming out with things and and, uh, assertions that were considered misinformation and disinformation at the beginning of COVID. You know, so it's the the, what what is popularly known has already changed. And we haven't apologized, you know, to, to some of the people who got their, you know, accounts shut down because they actually said, hey, maybe actually. And the funny thing about when you mentioned the um, getting Alex getting in trouble for saying that, that um, the vaccines are more of a therapeutic. I mean, I've heard very pro vaccine people say essentially that, that it doesn't prevent transmission. So it, it's one of these things where it, it, if someone is selling you a bill of goods that, oh, yeah, we have perfect knowledge at this at this moment. We always think we have perfect knowledge and we're always wrong. How what do you make of because I, I mean, I think I know the answer, but what do you make of the fact that Alex sued Twitter, you know, that of using the courts? to battle these overreaches. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, one thing that, that we see, like, so for example, like fire, uh, we, we fight private colleges. Um, and b- even though f- uh, private colleges are not bound by the First Amendment, they do make promises of freedom of speech. They do make promises of academic freedom. And a lot of these social media companies, they have, um, you know, at least some minimal guarantees of process yeah. some minimal guarantees of, you know, uh, that we won't shut down people because of their viewpoint. And if they if they're promising that contractually speaking, then you potentially have a lawsuit. That's how he won. He he tweeted yeah. out a step by step guide and basically said if Twitter had just had issued no terms of service, they would have won. But because they said, here's our five strike procedure and, mm-hmm. you know, these are the circumstances under which we would permanently ban somebody and they didn't follow it in his case. Uh, and it seemed tailored, you know, specifically after the fact to get Alex off Twitter. That's why he won. So it, just because it's a private company, it's not true that they can just do whatever they want. There are terms of service and there are implicit and explicit promises in some cases to the users on what they will and will not do. It, it's helpful, right, to have a lawyer, to at least look into a lawyer, to call a group like yours and say, do I have something or don't I? And so is that something that you like with the new fire, the new and expanded fire that's off of the college campuses, not off, but adding to help in a case like this for a civilian? Are the high fuel costs putting a damper on your summer vacay plans? From higher prices at the pump to a jump in airfare, it's getting more expensive to get away for a week. But what if you didn't have to? What if you could just soak up those vacation vibes year round in the privacy of your own home and property? You can! Get yourself a Michael Phelps swim spa by Master Spas. Whether you want to stay close to home this summer or you just want to extend your break, a Michael Phelps swim spa by Master Spas can transform your backyard into it. It combines the benefits of a pool with the therapy of a hot tub. It's going to reinvent your family time. You need a little like injection of novelty. 
in your backyard and the way you socialize with your friends and your family. This is it. Michael Phelps Swim Spas by Master Spas come in a variety of sizes that will complement almost any yard. Even if you're like, mine's too small, it'll never fit. It will. It will. And since it's heated, you can use it year round in any climate. Michael Phelps Swim Spas are 100% made in the USA by Master Spas. That's the world's largest swim spa manufacturer. Go to masterspas.com, put in the promo code MK to save $1,000 on a Michael Phelps Swim Spa or $500 on a Master Spas hot tub. That's masterspas.com, promo code MK. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.